Welcome back to the Zach Lab channel, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys are doing very well. Today, joining me, two very special people, Alfie Biggs. Welcome to the channel. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming down and jumping onto this video. Patrick von Straten, you're here every week. As I said last week, my Adele. <laughs> you're my Adele. How are you doing? I'm your Adele. Um, yeah, I feel good, man. It's nice to be here. Sure. I mean, whenever you say I'm here every week, it really does make me feel like I've got absolutely nothing going on. In my life. <laughs> but yes, so you got two kids. You got two, I kids, do have two kids, so you are yeah. a lot I'm busier, daddy. a lot busier than myself. Um, as you guys can see by the title of this video, we're going to be looking back at the summer transfer window and having a look at how the players who moved to every single Premier League club. We're going to try and go through all twenty. So bear with us uh, and see how they've done. Now I've come up with five tags or tier list options for us to put them into. The creme de la creme is signing of the season. Now, we're going to only probably put one, two, or maybe three in there, and we'll see where we get to at the end, and maybe have to debate and take someone out. Uh, then amazing, a mid-tier of fine, and then we've got awful, and also, last but not least, find the receipt. Um, there's a few players I think could be doing with that. Um, and let's start off, Pat, with your club, Arsenal Football club. Okay. Um, obviously, you brought in a couple of signings this year. You're in Timber. Can't really touch on him. Had a nice start, then got injured, and mm. we've not been able to to see much of him. There's again going to be a few players like this that got injured. Um, but let's start off with probably the best. Right, Declan Rice just captained England um, midweek against Belgium. What a player he's been so far. Uh, yeah, he's been exactly what you hoped you'd get for 100 million pounds um actually i'd say he's been a little bit more because mm. he's got six goals and five assists in the premier league which i definitely did not expect and you know key goals as well and adding physical presence i think but really you know arsenal's attack picked up after christmas and they currently scored the most goals in the league but attacking wise if you look at their underlying numbers they're about level with city and they're a little bit behind liverpool where they are ahead of everyone is in defensive numbers like the defence has been phenomenal and actually they should have conceded even fewer goals than they have. They should have. We'll come on to Raya in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that Rice is a huge part of that. You know, like, I obviously the less said about Thomas Partey, the better. But like, as, as a presence shielding the back line, Rice is much more consistent, I would say. And it's been really interesting to see as well how Arteta has sort of developed... The tactics, because there were points earlier in the season when Jorginho Rice felt like a really negative setup yeah. for Arsenal. Well, yeah. now we're seeing Rice get a little bit more ambitious, running into the box a bit more, um, providing more of a threat, and it makes Arsenal feel less um, rigid where, when they when they field that two man midfield. So I think he's definitely got to be a contender for signing of the season. Um, do you think if he's Arsenal got end up better? winning the league, then... do you think he's got better with Arsenal, or do you think he was performing like this at West Ham? And now he's just playing in a better team with better players. I mean, a bit about it. yeah, it's kind of hard. To, it's yeah. kind of hard to say that. But he's at an age where you would—he's kind of becoming the finished article. Mm. Um, so yeah, I do think he's improved a bit, and certainly you know those goal numbers he's improved a bit. But his progressive passing as well has been fantastic. So I would say yes, he has improved a bit, and yes, he has stepped into a better side. Mm. But to me, improving isn't just like. Is he adding more goals? Is he making more tackles and interceptions? It's can you adapt to more extreme tactical demands? And there are very different tactical demands playing in a Moy system, yeah, yeah. Um, and playing in an Arteta side that's expected to win most of its games. Yeah, you have to cover more ground. You have to uh, defend in transition more. So, so in that sense, I think he's improved as well. I also think it's worth adding his his personality has been fantastic i think obviously as a, as a player has been brilliant but the way he's come in and already kind of taken up a leadership role really within that arsenal mm. squad and and at times can i take the captain's armband on or or there's also a classic thing in football where every player should be a captain but he very much does uh, represent that i think it helps with such a young squad that arsenal do have sure. uh, he's got a very experienced head on his shoulders um alfie we'll move to kai Havert. actually you know quickly Signing of the season, we'll put him in there? Declan yeah, definitely. Rice? Okay, we'll put Declan Rice into the signing of the season category. We'll see who else joins him later on. Guy Havertz, Alfie. How do you feel he's been this season? Because obviously he left a Chelsea side that has gotten worse. Um, or is at least the same level as they were possibly last season. Maybe slightly a little bit better. Um, and join a side where he's played a lot of different positions. Had different expectations for him. I think... At the start of the season, a lot of Arsenal fans were not happy with his kind of output and how it was going. Whereas more recently, 
a lot more positive, a lot more positivity around uh, the signing. How do we feel about Kai? I think since that move from the left eight to the nine, I think he's been much better. Yeah. I think he is a unicorn. He's got such a unique skill set that really does suit that nine role, whether it's, there's been a lot of chat around Arsenal's sort of underperforming attack, which it has done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you've seen over the last sort of eight weeks, there's been a massive, massive improvement. And I think he is an excellent footballer. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think it's very easy to sort of say, what a terrible signing. He's got, where, where does he play? But I think we have really found that. I think we found this sort of natural, natural role now as a nine. He's clearly got, a, he's clearly very, very, very intelligent. He picks up spaces excellently and he's just somebody also i think people get he's such a physical presence yeah mm. he's huge. massive yeah and that is really really the you know against and he was burnley you know back post header they haven't really got anybody else like that and i think it sort of shows how little jesus is getting in as well he's not really yeah. been really an option this season particularly and i think that's really a credit to kai Havertz. no he's done i think he's done more recently done done very well. I think that midfield role for him at times has been interesting. I think a lot more of it's been expected of it. I yeah. think some I actually think a degree of Jack's season last year was underappreciated Definitely. when he left. Yeah. Um and and for Kai to have filled that role so well, for Kai to have filled that role would have been a really big, big task yeah. for him to have done. And as you said, with Jorginho playing at times back, like we've kind of seen even Declan Rice go into that kind of mould and be further forward. Uh, on the pitch and kind of strive with it. I think if I was looking at a category for him, would Fine be okay for you, Pat, there? I don't think he's been amazing. Mm. But do you think that Fine is the right kind of name? Well, especially given the price. Yeah. yeah. Um, 60-odd. I would say Fine sort of edging up. Like, it wouldn't... Like, if he gets a couple of winners towards the end of the season, then you can push him up. And if Arsenal win the league, yeah, then yeah, you yeah, can yeah, push yeah, him up. Yeah. But I think that for the price you paid, you know, he's got eight goals, three assists in the league. I think it would be pretty generous to call that amazing. Though I do think that tactical flexibility is a part of it. I mean, he looks like he's been a good signing given the way things were going in the autumn, given the price they paid. That, I'd say, is a win. <laughs> hoping hoping to class him as amazing is maybe a bit optimistic. Okay, well, let's move on to the final one that we're going to talk about for Arsenal. Uh, Raya, David Raya, uh, who is, I think it was about like £25 million pounds it's going to cost Arsenal in the end to make it permanent, permanent um, has been good this season i a couple of weeks ago put him actually in my overrated 11 um more so of just the fact of i don't think he's been and this is you know this is the comparing him to someone like allison's impact on liverpool is ridiculous because it is the best you could you could possibly have for a goalkeeper mm -hmm. um and when you looked at them statistically between ramsdale last season and also raya this season there wasn't dramatic um uh differences apart from obviously crosses crosses claimed in the air um but Raya, I think, has been a good signing. I don't. We obviously, we obviously don't have good in our categories right now. We've got. I think he's. I think he's been better than fine. Uh, but I don't quite think he's been amazing, which is a which is a which is an interesting one to go into. I think you, Pat, maybe would probably lean more towards the amazing side. No, no, no. I think no. Fine. You fine. You think fine as well. I don't think his shot stopping has been as good. Like last season, he was one of the best shot stoppers in the league. His shot okay. stopping hasn't been good this season. Uh, but I'd say what stops it being him being bad. Yeah is the fact that his kind of footballing abilities have been so okay. um so important and his cross claiming or high ball claiming like those have those i'd say are making up at the moment for subpar shot stopping yeah it's interesting when i did that when we did do that overrated when i mentioned it it was the game week where arsenal played brentford sure. and raya couldn't play in goal and that's when ramsdale played and he had the mistake of passing yeah, of out course. from the feet, which is something obviously that Ray has been so good with yeah. uh, but ramsdale did make some incredible shots uh some incredible saves uh, for Arsenal in those games as well. I think fine is a really good way to put that. Um, and we'll end it there with Arsenal. Again, I think Pat is right. Depending on how the season goes, if Arsenal end up lifting that trophy, a few of them might end up getting bumped up. Uh, let's move to Aston Villa then um, and talk about Unai Emery's signings. Now, we've got a few here. We've got Diaby, Musa Diaby, who joined, uh, had a really good start to the season as well. They maybe possibly dwindled off. Uh, Pal Torres uh, at the back, Tielemans who has been in and out of the side, and Zaniolo who has been more of an of an impact player. We start with Musa Diaby, four goals and six assists so far this season. Alfie, at the start of the season when he was playing, it felt like, oh my god, yeah. this kid is ridiculous. Um, how did no one else jump into him? 
towards the latter or towards where we are now i think we've seen more kind of mediocre performances i think the the ratings if, if you kind of believe those systems of like 6.3s and such more often where do we stand with him so far this year because he's still quite a young guy yeah and is. there's a lot of uh, and aston villa as well have been very good for a long stage but again there was a couple of months where they dropped off and for someone like musa diaby um is a lot expected of him after such a good start of the season i've been quite impressed with him i think when he came in when he was sort of playing alongside Watkins, mm. Watkins, I think that is his best role. But I've also been really, really surprised how creative he's been. Mm -hmm. Because looking how he was at Leverkusen, he was more, he did have that creative aspect to his game, but he was more of a sort of in behind option out wide. But the numbers are sort of 91st uh, percentile out of Europe's top five leagues before was in progressive passes, yeah, which isn't really something good. you'd really expect from a player like him. 84 percentile for shot creating actions, which is another really good sort of that's whether that's from a pass or a dribble but I've been really impressed I think obviously you know a lot of players come in impressed really hard come to England and they do struggle sort of over the winter and I think with Villa as well there has been a slight drop off and that might be fatigue they're playing a lot of games obviously this confidently it's a bit of a must win for them yeah so I think there was always going to be a bit of a drop off um and with injuries as well they have struggled but I think it's I think it's been a very commendable first season Okay, where would you put him within that list right now? I've placed, him in, a, I've placed him in amazing. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I think out of Villa's players so far this season, yeah. obviously Watkins has been incredible. Yeah. Um, but he is probably, yeah, second or, or, or third. He's definitely a standout player. Villa, isn't he? Uh, Pal Torres, Pat. When he joined the league, I think he got a lot of criticism. Um, mm -hmm. But I think he's managed to do a pretty good job so far this year. He's already had the second most uh, minutes for a centre-back so far uh, for Aston Villa. He's seventh most in the squad in total. I feel like he has maybe silenced any doubt as he had, but I wouldn't necessarily say he's been the best centre back in the league so far. No, and Villa's defence hasn't been amazing, particularly <laughs> yeah. good. But I also don't think they get a huge amount of protection. Um, you yeah. know, centre backs in that system. That said, when he's been called upon to defend, he hasn't been great. Um, I think. He's succeeding in like 45% of his challenges. And for a defender, you do kind of want to look at north of 60. Like yeah. that is that is quite poor. Um, but at the same time, you know, you look, for example, at that games like that Spurs game, you see how when the midfield falls apart, suddenly the centre backs are left in oceans of space. And it's kind of a lose lose situation. There's yeah. not very much you can do. Um, and when he's on the ball, I think he's been incredibly. Um, influential for the side that's always been his one of his main assets yeah it? yeah that was the thing they said they yeah. kind of wanted from him uh he's their leading passer into the final third leading passer in the squad he's the leading progressive passer out of the defense there are a couple of guys ahead of him obviously in the midfield um well i think that kind of helps them stay on the front foot and they are a side who when they're rolling downhill they feel like they're really hard to live with yeah. when the game settles down and it's more stable then i think Villa are a team you can kind of pick apart if you're one of the yeah. better sides um uh, I I kind of want to be generous here, but I just think amazing is just too strong yeah. Yeah, for a guy yeah, who I don't think has been good enough in one-on-one -on -one defending moments. We've got to be we've got to be critical with them as well, and a little bit harsh with this kind of tier list. Can't have everyone in amazing as well. Uh, so Pal Torres fine is where we're going to put him. Uh, Yuri Tielemans is an interesting one because he's someone who has been. I don't even know if we've seen enough of him re really to give him a proper tag. He's been in and out of the side. Uh, he's started only eleven games so far this season in the Premier League. Um, he's made 14 substitute appearances but that is kind of what Unai Emery's used him for as yeah. the guy to give a bit of rest to the rest of the midfield when they need it um, and to make that impact stuff like Jesus he's a hell of a guy to bring off from the bring on from the bench the quality he has um, is somebody that would be starting for a lot of other other Premier League sides um, but yeah I just don't know if we've seen enough really to to be get, to be going oh he's an amazing signing I don't think he's awful no. I think again the fine category for me yeah. uh, as for Zaniolo he really hasn't no. hasn't been incredible. Like I, I do talk about T Tielemans not starting games. Zaniolo hasn't started the game since mid-December, which is a little bit of an issue here. Um, and obviously, when you bring in players, and Zaniolo's had this kind of tag around his career for the last couple of years now, where it's uh, he's either injured all the time or is he going to make it? Obviously, he went to Galatasaray, didn't work out there now came to the Premier League, has had some bright moments. Like, there have been some games so far that when he's been on for Aston Villa uh, from the bench uh, where he's looked good or had, like, an impact. But I just don't think it's been incredible. Look, for the for the deal itself, 
It's like in between fine and awful. I put it in awful. You put it yeah, in awful. I, I didn't All right, understand lads, you can take that. that one. You can take that one. <laughs> awful is that. perfect. Uh, let's move then on to the London Blues, as Pez would have used to have said, or does say still, I guess. Um, no one knows. Um, let's move on. There's a few players here that we're going to talk about because a lot of them have actually had a lot of minutes so far. Let's start with the two goalkeepers then because I think they play into an effect of each other's transfers, essentially. Chelsea brought in Sanchez from Brighton in the summer. Um, someone who kind of fell out with the Brighton team last year. Obviously, he was replaced in goal by Steele. Um, and they also brought in uh, Petrovic uh, from America, who who kind of essentially replaced him. Sanchez got injured halfway through the season, um, and then Petrovic came in and has done a pretty good job. If you actually look statistically, Petrovic isn't far and away the best goalkeeper here. Um, however, I feel like when you watch him with the eye test when he's playing in goal for Chelsea, he's been really strong. I think he's yeah. commanded his box really well. I think he's a much more calm present than someone like Sanchez is when he's in, in the net. Um, Alfie, how do you feel about the two goalkeepers and where would you put them? I've put Petrovic in fine <laughs> and I've put Sanchez in fine in I haven't been impressed with him at all. I think he's made many, many errors yeah. that have led to goals or big chances. I think at the time as well, I think it was a weird signing. I think obviously the goalkeeper like market is incredibly limited and I think it is tough. But look at like how Spurs have signed Vicario, similar situation, and look how, how look how well he's done. He was displaced at Brighton ultimately by Dacian Steele, and then Chelsea go sign him. But I think Petrovic, like you said, safe. He's just he does the basics really well. And I think he's put in a very good shift. And he's young as well. He the is, goalkeepers, yeah. I mean, Sanchez isn't necessarily old either, uh, but there's no. at least some improvement there. Uh, do you agree, Pat? You happy with, with that, I guess? Yeah, I think you've got to go fine, fine. Like, I mean, if Sanchez had been your only goalkeeper signing and now you are you were really depending on him, I might be tempted to put him in awful. But mm. now that he's like your backup goalkeeper, he's definitely fine. Yeah, <laughs> like, calm, yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to then the British transfer record. Moises Caicedo. Boy. <laughs> this is going to be interesting because I actually haven't necessarily thought too much about the money element of these signings and more just how they've been this season. But with, with some of these guys, we're going to have to think about it. Uh, Caicedo is the record signing for the Premier League. He's had the fourth most minutes of any Chelsea player. Defensively, has been really good. Like, there are sometimes I watch him and I think, geez, how, how did he win that tackle? How did sometimes he, he manages like to have these uh, robotic legs that scoop round and take the ball every single time. Um, but I think for me in terms of category, it's fine. I don't know where you're, you're sitting, Pat. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, like you signed a young guy who was meant to be at the heart of that midfield for 10 years. It's completely reasonable for him to have a season where he looks the same or looks slightly worse. He's in a quite dysfunctional side. He's with players who he's never played with before. And this is what I was saying Previously, you know, like there are so many players in this team who are new to the league, new to top flight football, certainly new to their teammates, new to the manager. Yeah. Like everything here is in a state yeah. of flux. And it's not that surprising that your young defensive midfielder is maybe not as um, not flying in the way that he was last season. Um, that said, I don't think he's been bad. He's had bad moments, but he's it's definitely been fine. Unless, I guess, Chelsea end up in a significant financial yeah, that's. I mean, oh, at yeah. the end of the season, which kind of looks like it's going to happen. Like, I keep talking about this, and I think we all just assume it's not going to happen. But like, actually, now I think about it, both your clubs could just be, could just <laughs> be fan, yeah, liquidated. But actually, at the end of the season, <laughs> it's genuinely a worry. So from that point of view, then you start to think, ah, how fine is this? Yeah, Jesus. I mean, <laughs> thing okay. is, I think, I think, I think that's a video we can do at the end, towards the end of the season, or once the end of the season has happened, before the Euros, I guess. We can maybe look into the financial states of clubs and what the impacts might be because there's a few of them. Mate, um, yeah. It's actually quite it's effect, quite yeah. a worrying situation and like it's an interesting test case for like what is the Premier League going to do if some teams are in a position where their ownership could mean that they come to the brink of failure. Yeah. yeah. You know, like is the league going to start seizing teams and say like we are going to sort but of the league approved... put you in a, a different version of administration. But then this I mean this goes into, we're going very off topic. <laughs> but the league approved these guys yeah. like 
Sometimes you got okay. Well, you're we've made an error here. Technically, well, they haven't. Done. They haven't approved seven seven seven. Yeah, yet. not yet. We've, but they're yeah, like we're it's... minded to approve it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, it's going to be right. interesting. Um, okay, we'll put because Kai- there's a few more chess players. We'll go. Right yeah, you don't them. say. Uh, Kai Sado is fine. Jackson here, uh, probably more of one of the positive ones we can talk about, which is weird at times because I think there has been an idea or a tag with Jackson that he hasn't been very good this season. He's missed lots of chances. But this is also a guy who, until maybe midway through last season, wasn't getting ver- a lot of minutes or barely playing for a senior professional side. Um, mm. So it's no surprise that in okay, in a year and a half worth of football, you're still seeing someone make mistakes, not quite understand maybe or the, the right run to make or the right decision to make. Um, I think back to the game against Leicester, where he gets the free kick on the edge of the box, a man gets sent off. And maybe he should take it first time or maybe he should pass the ball like these are things that come within time but i i feel like watching him i've been fairly impressed like, i feel yeah. like i do see something there yeah. yes he is the third biggest underperformer of xg in the premier league so far um but he is taking 2.2 shots per game which is fine really absolutely okay <laughs> um he's off the ball work has been very good and the biggest thing he's got nine goals so far in the premier league which is something where Chelsea have really struggled in front of goal over the last few years. I think before, before obviously, Mason Mount um, getting, I think, double figures, we're looking back at, like, Tammy Abraham uh, yeah. when he was in Chelsea, when he scored 15 Premier League goals or something like this. And so for nine so far, and it feels like he probably will get to maybe 12, 13 come the end of the season, that's a really good debut campaign for someone that's quite in, as inexperienced as he is. Again, I'm not going to put him into amazing because that's just not where we are. Which is, there's only really one player who will maybe get on, who will get onto that can fit this kind of role. Um, so I'm going to take the lead on this one and put him into fine. And who knows? I think next season is going to be really interesting yeah, for him and see how he develops from that. Again, a guy that is a little bit versatile can play on the left wing. In Kunku, we've not seen enough. No, you haven't seen enough. You can't really. 318 anyone, minutes, yeah. two Premier League starts. Yeah, we've not is. seen anything really to to judge him. Uh, but next year is going to be really crucial because then he's what 28 um, really? was bought for 60 or 50 million Jeez. like we need to start seeing something uh cole palmer then a bit of positivity here lads a bit of positivity here uh alfie i'll let you rave right about him go on <laughs> um i saw something on instagram a couple of weeks ago and he's got the most goal contributions in euro's top five league for under 21 yeah more which, than Bellingham, more man, than Bell- which when i first saw it blew my mind but he has been brilliant and I think you're looking at conversations now are why have City sold him? At the time, I think there were a few chats around that, but it's really ramped up. It's a shame that he didn't get any minutes mm. this international break because I think he's, I think he's probably dead on for the for the Euro squad now, and I think he's done brilliantly. A lot of penalties, but obviously mm. that's fine. You've also got to score them exactly. Like, exactly. It's not a bad thing. Like, I understand people's like criticisms of penalty of, of having. Well, I think he scored. Five He's got five penalties. of his 11 goals in the league are penalties, penalties. Which is fine. Um, but I don't mind that. Like you, Many strikers make careers off of exactly, making sure exactly, they score exactly. penalties consistently. Um, and I think he's someone that, in a, in a Chelsea season that's been quite dire at times, has given a lot of fans some sort of like silver lining and a bit of light. How do you feel about Cole, uh, Patrick? I love him. I think he's incredible. I mean, he's... He's this interesting kind of player that we've seen develop over the last yeah. half decade, I'd say, where you've got some of the one-on-one kind of athletic presence of a winger, but you also have the decision-making and ability in tight spaces of a number 10. Mm. Um, what is he then? Where would you play him? Uh, if like, say, uh, England for the Euros, like he's probably not going to start realistically, but what is the position that you'd be playing Cole Palmer if you had to week in, week out? If you're building a squad around him, where does he play for you? I think, you know, for Chelsea, probably play him at 10, okay. but give him freedom to roam. Mm. Uh, for England, I just think you've just got, you've, you're, you're stuck with the talent you've got. So I think you just find a way to put it together that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. I don't care about England or Chelsea. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I'm going to resist putting him in signing of the season, even though I do think we'll look back on it as a as a remarkable signing. Okay. Yeah. Just because I do think the pens take him down from basically a goal or assist every start to like you know 14 and 19 which is still incredible <laughs> yeah. in his first season of senior football but really the reason that i'm not going to put him in signing of the season is because i think signing of the season in my opinion should be somebody somebody who either takes a team from non-champions league to champions league from contender to title winner or helps them beat relegation 
that to me is a signing. Of, yeah, okay. Yeah, where would you be without him? So uh, if he'd made that kind of difference, I'd okay. be more tempted to give it. But if we're saying like Rice could be signing of the season because he could help Arsenal win the title, I'd be happy with him not winning signing of the season if Arsenal don't win the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've okay. got to apply the same kind of rule to yeah. Palmer. But... I think that's fair. So amazing. We'll put him in amazing. This is as good yeah, a first yeah. season as I can remember a youngster having in the Premier League. He is older than they tend yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like true. he's he's, he's twenty one yeah. rather than like, you know, yeah, eighteen like. Yeah. Like, or sixteen like you might. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> wow. But it's um, incredible stuff. Okay then, well there we are. Those are Chelsea's transfers. Uh we're gonna quickly go into Nottingham Forest and touch upon a few. Uh Boy. I wanna talk about Anthony Alanga. Uh five goals, seven assists so far this year, made the decision to leave Manchester United uh and, and go to Forest. I think it's been really solid so far for them. I think uh, Kanemar Sadoi, the same, has been has been uh, good. He's obviously only made 11 starts so far this season, but four goals, one assist. I think those two have been maybe more the the shining lights. Actually, Morello. Morello at the back yeah. has been incredible for them. I love him. He's almost like the one that Forest fans yeah. adore and think he's going to be something special. We've seen Liverpool look at him already. Chelsea interested in him, but who aren't we interested in? Um, so I would say Alanga... I'm tempted. No, he's not amazing. It's not amazing. It's a good season. Twelve goals. I think I I'd, I'd put him in amazing. Yeah. Okay. I think he's All right. Brilliant. Okay. Alanga going into amazing. There I are think... games he's won for them by himself. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a very good point. Callum Hudson Doyle will put into fine. Yeah. Uh, but it's just good to see him playing football. Exactly. To be quite yeah. honest, yeah, like, yeah, the guy 100%. just needed that. Um, Morello, amazing. I put him in amazing. Uh, be interested to see what happens. If, obviously, what happens with Forrest at the end of the season, where he will be next year. Yeah. Patrick, I want to talk about Sangare. Okay. Because this is someone on Football Daily. Yeah, uh, we mentioned all the time about someone. We've been talking him about up. him for about ten years. <laughs> it feels like since it. he was at Toulouse. It feels like it. Yeah. How do we feel he's been this season? Because defensively, defensive numbers really Super, strong. Yeah. Something he's always had in his game. But there's not been much else. Sure. And the thing that was impressive about <coughs> him when he was young is he was a really good ball carrier. Mm -hmm. uh, like dribbled quite a lot and very successfully. Um, a really good progressive passer, as well as having amazing defensive numbers. Um, it, it is a bit of a sea change for him coming from PSV, where you're expected to be on the front foot, you're expected to dominate the ball. And as a result, you are able to put up these great progressive passing numbers. And his progressive passes have gone from nine and a half a game to just under four. He's gone from seven and a half passes into the final third into three yeah so there are big drop-offs but some of that as well it's hard to tell if it's just also because of the way that Forrest progressed the ball you know similarly his pass accuracy has dropped by 10 percent yeah from nearly 90 to just under 80 that is not something that just happens because you change league or change club that that statistic is normally really stable and whenever you look at Forrest players the the pass accuracy is always dreadful so to me that's more like a feature of how they play rather than because those guys are all just crap at passing the ball. Yeah. Um, so some of it, I think, is kind of team effects, but it has been a little bit demoralising, I'd say. But then again, it was depressing that he went off to the Eredivisie at a point yeah, where it felt like true. he could have gone to... I think he was rumoured... You know, he was linked with like Napoli in teams years yeah. ago when they were in the doldrums. So I would say, you know, he's been fine. He's definitely been fine. But it's, on a personal note, slightly disappointing. Yeah. And I think a lot of us... Who, who kind of follow football in this way were slightly disappointed that <laughs> yeah, he didn't like yeah. set the world on fire. <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll put him... Are we going to put him in fine or are we going to put him in awful? Fine. Fine. Okay. Fine. Fine. Fine it is. Uh, one final one we want to touch upon, Alfie. Uh, another goalkeeper, Matt Turner. So he is <laughs> alongside the other goalkeeper this time, Black on my ass, is in yeah. the seat. I think Matt Turner, I think he's probably the worst goalkeeper in the Premier League who's had played consistent minutes. I think he has been, don't want to dig him out, but mistakes yeah. with his feet, with his hands, positioning, can't really claim. So his, his whole job. I don't yeah. know. I, 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 it's, it's a shame because what when he was at Arsenal, what, not... So he was like a guy who we played sometimes yeah. in the Europa, you know? Yeah. And when he'd play, I was just like... Was well, he second so choice or third choice? Uh, he was second, but that was because of um, Runnison. yeah Runnison, uh, who was yeah. like he doesn't, he's <laughs> not he's not real. Like, he, doesn't he does it like when you he doesn't exist. Like Turner yeah, at no least way. has hands and feet to do things. Like, <laughs> like Runnison, you're like there are question marks. Yeah, but it's uh, I don't know. It was just I was glad I didn't care about the Europa League when he played. <laughs> like, that was that was how I felt. 
So is he going in awful or find the receipt? Find the receipt. They've find had the signs. Forest have signed three goalkeepers this year. Jesus, wet man. They've just signed Sales, yeah. who does look slightly better, but still, he's still. And I've seen them linked with the uh, Brazilian keeper that. Oh, uh, okay. Played against yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, that's, I mean, yeah, when you when in in the space of a year, you're looking at four different keepers is probably not the, the best sign on, on Matt Turner. Well, and Forrest are in the relegation zone, yeah. right? Yeah. And if they end up going down, like he will be part of the reason. Oh, like, 100 That's, yeah, that's 100%. literally the He's most been, costly thing awful. you can do. In well, we were talking <laughs> off screen beforehand about someone like Pickford and about Everton and just how, yeah, for the level of Everton, like. We'd be in a different does. situation if we didn't have it. He really does help. Yeah. Um, okay, well, there we have it for Forest signings. Again, we can't talk about every single player because we'd be here forever. Um, and we've already been going for about 28 minutes. Um, Manchester United then. Um, Mason Mount, don't think he's played enough yet, really, for us to have given a proper opinion. Um, Hoyland, let's go on to him first. Seven Premier League goals so far in his first uh, Premier League campaign. Two assists, five also in the Champions League. Took a while for him to get firing, Pat. He's 21 years old. But I feel like that man, I've got a little bit of a player here. It really does feel it. Yeah, it depends how he gets sort of domesticated. Because one of the things <laughs> I like most about him is that like United is such a basket case and so individualistic in the way they play. Like yeah. there's, there's no kind of like system to it seemingly when you watch them. That a guy like this who has such incredible physical gifts and is kind of fearless really does stand out in the same way, as I said before, like Garnacho yeah. stands out. Yeah. Like these people who are willing to take responsibility and just like run at people feel so exciting. Yeah, no fear there essentially. What yeah. Doing. yeah. It would be interesting to see what it's like when he is required to play in the centre as a striker and find space up against Premier League defenders consistently. Like, don't get me wrong, he can do it, but it's very different when you're allowed to drop out to the wings, allowed to come deep when you are just playing up front in a side that has all the ball all game long um, and where space is like at a premium, it'll be more of a question. However, again, it's a it's a really good season. Like yeah. he came there without a particularly long track record. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's a, it's a really good season. I think amazing would be strong, possibly. Oh, fine feels harsh. Yeah, I, I put him in amazing. I'm okay with putting him in amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and obviously what, he's had a slight injury or two here or there, but he does look, he does look like the real deal. We'll see. I don't know, Alfie, why I keep coming to you for goalkeepers here. Mm -hmm. um, you're our goalkeeper expert, but Onana is an interesting one because, again, someone I think if you look at the face of it is given a lot of negative headlines, yeah. especially for the start of the season, um, and a lot of errors in the Champions League as well. But he is joint uh, second for the most clean sheets in the league. Um, I think United as well. <laughs> they've crazy. The, the fourth <laughs> most shots as well in the Premier yeah. League. Um, he's made 104 saves so far this season. I think the most in the league is 112. Um, he's, compared to the start and where we are now. Yeah, it's massive he's, improvement. He's been very good, hasn't he? I think or been good. The Champions better. League group stage definitely didn't do him any justice. But he's obviously <laughs> a very good goalkeeper. Um with his feet, long, short, brilliant. Set, set, shot stopping wise, it is strong still. From a test technical aspect though, I don't like how he positions himself. Okay. How he's so close to the line. I, I'd like to understand more about it, but from my perspective, it, he always looks uncomfortable. He never looks like he's really, he looks like he has to pull off this miraculous save, where in reality, if he was well positioned, yeah. it wouldn't have been so hard. But he's, <laughs> He is a good goalkeeper. Do you, I think, I think it's, especially if you look at his history as well, like yeah. he has always, if you look at Inter Milan, yeah, Champions, Champions League final, he was unbelievable. Incredible. But also like, there's been something about him in his whole career, even at Ajax, where he does make errors. Yes. Like he does make quite high profile errors. But that's what you get with yeah. a risk taker. Yeah, very true. And like, <laughs> it's quite, like sometimes something, you look at some of the errors, you just think, what on earth is going on <laughs> through your mind? And so that is a bit of an issue to have. Do we think he's in the, the fine category? I've got him in fine. Yeah. I don't think he's awful. Yeah. I don't think he's awful. Oh. <laughs> you think he's awful? No, 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 not at oh, all. I think, I think awful in the Champions League. Yes, yes. 100%. Oh, okay. 100%. Yeah, 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 I yeah. think in the Prem, I think he's got a shout of amazing. Yeah. Because United are dreadful. Their position <laughs> in the table yeah, yeah. is outrageous. Yeah. They should be nowhere near where they are. The stuff you reeled off just now, the second, like joint second most clean sheets yeah. in the league. Have you watched Manchester United? <laughs> like, that should not be possible. Yeah, true. Um, and I think they're third in the league for, you know, their stats versus, like, post-shot expected goals. 
just above them as Spurs. And we, I'm pretty certain when we come yeah, to Vicario, yeah. we're going to be like very complimentary. Well, Onana's been up there too in the league. It's just that he made so many mistakes early on. I think it sort of fossilized this idea of the kind of guy yeah. he was. And to be honest, he is... He does have a sort of chaotic energy to him, Definitely. which is not what you look for in a keeper. No. <laughs> um, Do you then? Though that said, given his history at Ajax, not just on the field, like that shouldn't have been shocking. To anybody. You know what I'm saying? Especially like, Ericsson Harp, who was his manager. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but just for actually doing his job as a keeper, it's kind of hard to fault him in the league. Like United would be in a considerably worse position without him. But if United should not even have a sniff of European football. It's a disgrace that we've allowed them to. <laughs> um, and I do think he gets some credit for it. So, yeah, amazing feels strong. But I also think... If we're saying awful for the Champions League, amazing for the league... Balance up. Average is out to fine. fine. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We'll put him okay. in at That's fine. very diplomatic. Um, what about we'll... your boy? Which is my boy? Money Mace. Money Mace. Well, I don't think we've seen enough of him yet. I feel, I, I feel, otherwise, if we're doing it right now, it is, it's an awful transfer, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. Blatantly. But he's just not played enough minutes. He's not played... Like, does he really have a system in that squad at the moment as well? Um, God knows. Um, <laughs> well, he's only just come back from injury, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how if he is in the squad week in week out. Yeah. If he's on the right wing, if he's playing in central midfield, um, we'll see. I mean, he's better than Anthony, that's for sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't want to touch upon him in terms of just. I don't think he's played enough to give him a fair assessment. Amrabat though, find the receipt. Yeah. yeah, find the receipt. Lucky it's a loan move because they were. That is a receipt. They yeah. were they've quite got literally, a receipt, yeah. yeah. But uh, there, were, there were moments where they're talking about like an obligation to buy or like a possible uh, buying him outright. Uh, but United you know, couldn't afford it, so they're very lucky on that front. And I called that. I got a lot of stick. <laughs> got a lot of stick for that. Uh, Brighton. Then let's start with Jao Pedro. Eight goals, two assists in the Premier League. Nineteen goals in all competitions. I think it's five in Europe, or it might, might be a little bit more than that. Um, doing very well. Yeah. I think he's been someone that's come in and kind of at times displaced uh, Evan Ferguson up top as well. He's been somebody that uh, De Zerbi's really enjoyed. And for a season before Brighton that hasn't been anywhere near as good as last year was, I think he's had a very stellar stellar season. Um, and I'd, I'd happily put him in amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Carlos... Especially his stuff outside of goal scoring. Yeah, he's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. He's a, in fact, he's a really interesting player. It'll be interesting to see whether someone... I don't think it will happen this summer. I think he doesn't need another year. But then the next summer, if, a, if a, another 100%. club tries to go in mm. for him. Um, let's talk about Carlos Baleba because he obviously has been another kind of shining light. The midfield for them was basically taken apart. Caicedo yeah. went, uh, Alexis McAllister went, and he's come in um, and been a really interesting player, Alfie. How do you feel about him? I really like him as a player, but I do think this year has definitely been sort of development year. Okay. He hasn't had massive minutes played. And I think, but you can really see he's going to be, next year, I'd imagine he'll have a massive step and really kick off. Yeah. He's got all the fundamentals to be sort of that energy in the midfield, ball winner, but he can he can really carry it nicely as well. It's just, I think it's just a bit of integration. Scored an outrageous goal this season as well, didn't he? He's been, uh, really, he is he's very good. Very good. Um, I'll put him in, we'll put him in fine, I think. Yeah, I'll put then. him in fine. Yeah, if we're putting Pedro in, in amazing, he's been in stellar, then I think mm -hmm. that's about right. Um, we'll talk about Verbruggen. Um, I don't know if it's more of a Deserby issue because he's one in a, you know, one day playing still, then putting in yeah. uh, Verbruggen. But I don't think Verbruggen's necessarily like been incredible. No, not either. at all. Like, I don't. I don't think he's really been in the fine category, to be honest. Like, if we're putting other goalkeepers there who have who have been quite solid, mm -hmm. um, I think we might have to put him in the awful one. Sounds a little bit harsh. But Brighton have been a little bit worse as well at the back. Um, and Sufati, Pat, another lone move, in and out of the squad, had injuries. Are we ever going to see this guy go back to what he once could have been? Uh, he's still very young. He is. He is still very is. young. I I don't know though. I mean, like, because even going back to Barcelona now, there are just so many people yeah. who have kind of displaced him. Yeah. Um, potentially not. And I think as well that his profile, you end up in a position where your kind of like financial requirements are not commensurate with what you're actually putting out on yeah, the pitch. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is an awful transfer this season, yeah. just because the cost to Brighton has been really, really high what they've actually seen out of him yeah um i would i would like to see it i would still be really excited for fatty to just like get his body right and have a great season and it's sad obviously this is what can happen uh if you play youngsters too much in yeah, football from too early on so barcelona 
Take hints. Um, okay, and the final one, Dahoud. Uh, I mean, can a free transfer be bad as Henry Hill got a lot of slate for um, earlier this season? Yes, he's already gone. Uh, so that one can go find the receipt. Um, let's move straight on to Bournemouth then. Um, a few players here hard to talk about. Tyler Adams hasn't played and just come back from injury. Um, I think same with Max Ahrens. He's been injured for half of the season. Justin Cliver, still only 24 years old. 17 starts, four goals so far this season. I think this is a guy who, over the last couple of years, it's like Willie, he, he's obviously been at some big clubs as yeah. well. Like Ro Roma was obviously somewhere where we thought this could work out for him. It didn't. He then gone to Bournemouth. There have been moments. Yeah. There have been bright moments. I think Bournemouth so far this year have been obviously very uh, interesting, fun to watch. Uh, Solanke's been incredible. Um, but I don't think whether... Justin Cliver isn't like the main guy for Bournemouth. No, 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 no. Like, I, for instance, Alex Scott, who's probably played a little bit less than him, I feel like you see a lot more kind of contributions from him in kind of all over the pitch. Yeah. Um, but especially in that attacking third. Whereas I think Justin Cliver sometimes a little bit quiet and then you might see a little bit. I don't think... Where would you? Where, what tag would you, you you put with him, Pat? I'd probably go fine <coughs> yeah, because he's a <clears throat> Premier League contributor and teams yeah. like Bournemouth do just need Premier League quality players. They also have had a bunch of misses recently, or not misses, but guys who I was really optimistic about and haven't ended up being important parts of the team. So obviously, obviously uh, Fevre went off to Lorient yeah, on yeah. loan. Uh, Hamid Junior Traore has now gone off to Napoli on loan. Yeah. Like these are guys who really had incredible statistical profiles in their respective countries and felt like they could be part of a really exciting side. When those transfers don't work out, then it's even more of a necessity that everybody else can just perform at a reasonable level. And I do think that Bournemouth, their success this season has been less about individual performances and more about like, you know, Iraola getting them working. In yeah, the true in a really productive way. So anyone who can kind of like switch in and out and be a part of that, I think deserves at least some credit for their tactical skill, mm -hmm. even if, you know, their output isn't amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Okay, we'll put them fine. Alex Scott then quickly. Four shock rate reactions per game, two progressive carries, 3.5 tackles as well per 90. This guy, when he's fit, looks really fun. Looks really interesting. Someone who will be interested to see how long he's at form of four if he can stay fit um again i think we haven't seen enough of him to put him in amazing i'd right. put him in amazing you put him amazing do you think, do you think i have seen a lot, enough of him already i adore i think he's a beautiful footballer <laughs> um i don't even like i was when i was thinking about him i didn't even want to like look at the stats i just think just the way he glides he tackles he creates i think if you look at how strong that under 21 midfield for england is yeah, and he's probably crazy. up there as one of the strongest candidates and i think he's been i think he was brilliant. I think Bristol Prem well as well, hasn't he? Hundred percent from the championship. He's done very, very well. He was yeah. levels ahead of everyone. In yeah, yeah. He's I really a like fantastic him. player. Um, okay, then I'll put him in amazing. We'll put him in amazing. Uh, Alfie, I'm going to reel some names then for you to Everton. Okay, and you're just going to uh, you're going to give me the tag and a little bit about him. Okay. Um, Beto, three go uh, two Premier League <laughs> goals so far this season. What do you think of him? He can't finish, <laughs> and I think Everton as a whole. We are the, I think you've got Calvert Lewin, the highest um, underachiever of XG, and then we've got Beto on the bench, who is, he's almost like a light Darwin Nunes from like a chaos perspective. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Darwin Nunes is far better. <laughs> so I think when you signed him, and I remember watching a lot of him, because we've, we've been linked with him for quite a while, I think a lot of top clubs, sort of middling, yeah, yeah. higher level clubs have been. And you watch what he does in Italy, and he's a bully. He's throwing people to the side, through on goal, slot. He is, he's very sort of unique with his finishing and his sort of where he moves, but he looked quality. But then you've got to look at who he's up against, and it's yeah. a 36-year-old center half who can't really move. And he just hasn't got the quality for me. Okay, and so is and it he... Was, and it was £26 million pounds as well. Oof. On a, on a, and at a stage where Everton cannot yeah, be afforded not spend that. a pound more. No. Okay, and would that be final receipt or awful? Or fine? Or awful. Okay. There is, I've, I've seen him sometimes play and think, yeah. like, there is something there with him. Like, especially the start of the season. It. it is, it is about unlocking it. Um, Dan Juma. Daesh doesn't trust him. <laughs> okay. So, you look at, you look at, it was a two million pound loan fee and it was very... Nice move at first, but he can't really play 
of a in a wide position of sort of a four four two. Can't you can't play up front on his own. So I think in and Decore, I'm not a huge fan of Decore, but his output is yeah. excellent. Mm. So you can't really bring him out from the ten roll. So it's whether or not. And Dyche does obviously really like Harrison and McNeil, so he just hasn't really had the game time. And I think it's a shame because he's a good footballer. Okay, all right. So maybe not played enough to give him a thing. Um, yeah. You mentioned him there, Harrison. Uh, he's on loan, isn't he? he is, is it yeah. obligation or no. just a? Oh, okay, so see what happens at the end of the season. It, when he first signed, it was basically it wasn't an obligation, but we were very much going to sign it. Now I think maybe not. Okay. I, um, is that because of the performances this yes. year? Okay. He is the epitome of style and substance. He will do, he'll receive it, Cruyff turn, <laughs> look unbelievable, and then he'll try and whip it across and it goes out. It's one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. He's, and I think if you, I think I was, there was some lead, uh, I was talking to some lead fans and they were saying about if you could bring one player back of like Binya, Calvin Phillips, the Jack Harrison, and it was just like, they've got that Jack Harrison right now. Jesus. And I think <laughs> Jesus. he hasn't been good enough. Okay. But he He's can moments. He can yeah. pick the ball up 40 yards out and put it in the top corner. Yeah. So But well, he has done that. <laughs> he has done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's just not it for me. Awful. Either. Yeah. Or find the receipt. I've got everyone bar Chimitty in awful. Okay. Oh, so Ashley Young is in awful as well? He's fine. Okay. Okay. But yeah, he's fine, but I would put him in. I've been watching. He's fine. But, like, no, but he's, he's 39 and he yeah, bless he, him. He's, he, yeah. bless he's him. <laughs> That's yeah. Okay. yeah, he's still doing um, it. Okay, Chimitty, really quickly. I put him in fine because we haven't so seen young. a lot of him. But he's he's very young, but also he's played about 600 senior minutes. Yeah, yeah. He did not play a lot in, in, um, in Portugal, Portugal at all. But I'm quite excited by him. Okay, nice. Well, let's see if you're in the Premier League to, to, to still be excited by yeah. him. I made that joke as well. We might not be a club. Um, okay, West Ham, Pat. Let's go. We're going to have to try and get through some quite quickly. Uh, West Ham, uh, Mohamed Kudos is obviously the star there. He's been amazing, hasn't he? Six goals, three assists, nearly four dribbles a game. Someone that's just really excited. Well, someone that was linked to higher, higher clubs than West Ham as well. Mm. Uh, he was almost going to go to Brighton. Um, he's been a real, uh, a really good player so far this season, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't think there can really be much debate here. Uh, he's he's one of the the best volume dribblers in the league. Popped up with important goals. Obviously, he has um, like pretty considerable positional versatility as well, which like the whole you hope basically. you will see over the time that he's there. Uh, I just don't really think they could have hoped for more out of him. Like yeah. he's kept them. There have been times where it's felt like he's kept them afloat. That, yeah. That's maybe a bit strong. Do um, think he's signing of the season? I've got him in signing of the season. I, I probably wouldn't go that far. But, but if they can, I think he's been super. If yeah. they get a European place this year, definitely. Given the way they were going at the beginning, there were there were worries. They, yeah, yeah, definitely. for a while there. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, maybe that's one where, depending on where they finish, he could. Similar to the Cole Palmer thing, yeah. is he doing enough in terms of the league as a whole to yeah. warrant that? Maybe not, but he's still been. Better yeah. than the players we've been putting amazing. Fair enough. Uh, Alvarez, quickly, Alfie. Um, been a solid midfielder for them. I really I like him. Really I think nice. I think he's gone very much under the radar. I think he's an absolute monster out of possession. He gives that presence as well. And he moves it nicely. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Um, James Ward-Prowse, I think we're going to stick in fine. Yeah. I know we spoke about many times here. Um but apart from his assist from a corner, what else does he do? Yeah. Um, my, one, my one objection, though, to these midfielders is that, like, West Ham's defence has been really, really bad. Really, Defend okay. really bad. Yeah. Like, I think there are six teams who've conceded more goals. There are only two teams who've allowed more XG. Like, and admittedly, that that is kind of about how they play, too. Um, you know, they do sort of allow teams to, like, come at them. Mm. And, like, it, uh, that that is never really conducive to, like, good XG numbers. But... I do. It's the kind of point I've always made about Ward Prowse, which is people are like, "Wow, he's fantastic." Why are these teams that he plays for so porous in the midfield? And like, <laughs> nobody ever really seems to like slot these two parts together mentally. Um, I'm not. I, I certainly don't think that you could say he's been worse than fine. In fact, I'd say five goals, seven assists. Like, you're knocking on the door of amazing from yeah. what you yeah. know, what you're hoping to get from him. He has absolutely done it. Definitely. But their midfield needs to be worked out. Uh, I think there's talent there, but 
but it is not working at the moment. And whether that's Moyes or whether it is the quality of the players, mm. that's an open question, I think. Okay. Um, Mavropanos. No one cares, bro. Yeah, literally. No one cares. Literally. Uh, Brentford, Flecken, really quickly. Worst post-shot expected goals <laughs> in the Premier League. Have one decent game against Man City. Uh, find the receipt. Uh, Mapai, lone move, six goals, three assists. Really not too bad. That's actually. fantastic. Yeah, really not too bad. Uh, it's surprising when I found that stat. Um, and he's had a lot of... Um, he's, he's done his Neil Mapai stuff as well. That everyone, people enjoy. Um, Palace, Franca, started only one game. Super young. Can't really talk about him. Um, Adam Wharton, too soon. Only just joined from the championship side of five games. Very good, though. Yeah, he does look very good, Very, actually. very I think good. That's a, that's a fair point. Um, Rob Holding, hasn't played a Premier League game for Crystal Palace yet. Quality Blew is. my mind. This. Yeah. He's played one game so far this season from the bench for anything. And that was uh, in the Carabao Cup, I think. Did have surgery, though, and is recovering from that. So it makes sense. The only one we talk about, Dean Henderson. And he's only played eight games. Weird um, move. And he's got a minus 2.7 post-shot expected goals, which is nearly the same as Raya. But Raya's also played 22 games. Uh, so yeah, take right. that how you will. I think Dean Henderson... Awful. Yeah, yeah. Awful. Yeah, awful. Okay, Liverpool. Dominic Stabozlai, 23 games, three goals, two assists, um, which is about the same as his expected goals and expected assists. I spoke about him before saying I think he's slightly overrated in terms of that. I think yeah. people put him on this pedestal of being in insane. Um, and he's good. He's very good in some games as well, but he's just not like, you know, incredible in every single game. And like, there were times people saying he should be in team of the season um and i yeah. really don't think that is the case um but i would happily put him with a fine tag he's fine yeah yeah i haven't been super impressed i think there's a lot of sort of discussion around he can do this or he yeah. may do this i don't think technically obviously from a ball strike perspective top but the way he receives it not a big fan of he can't really receive off different angles i think he struggles from that aspect but he is a good player still yeah i think it's definitely easy to say oh he's so overrated and then underrate him because i do think he's a good mm. player i think that's true and also like this is a guy who isn't playing right wing anymore no. like he's playing a more kind of reserved role he's having to fill in at times for trent alexander arnold when he was bombing forward um and so yeah i'm fine with fine mccallister patrick and straffton how do you think he's been this year i think he's been great yeah i think he's been really really good like i was much more optimistic about Savoslai. Yeah, I, I do think McAllister is yes. quite physically limited. Um, and yet, that midfield should not have worked. And early in the season, defensively, it was not working. No. Yeah. Um, and then Klopp stabilised it through like magic. And you know, like <laughs> going say, I'm leaving, lads. Yeah, <laughs> through being like one of the best coaches that yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah. in the last 15 years. Yeah. Um, like he did just make a midfield work that shouldn't have defensively. Um, with some like spit and Wataruendo. And like, <laughs> um, McAllister, he leads the team in defensive numbers, but he does loads of other stuff as well. Yeah, you know, like he's a great progressive carrier, great progressive passer. And I do think my, my general feeling with a midfielder at the top level is you're not allowed to drop a performance worse than a six out of 10. Yeah, okay. Like, you yeah. don't have to do 10s. But someone like Rodri, we talk about as one of the best midfielders in the world. Mm. I don't think Rodri very often has like a, a 10 out of 10 game or even a 9 out of 10 game. But what he never really has is less than a 7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, He just doesn't do it. And I think by being a reliable, trustworthy presence in midfield who just does the right things at the right time, you can be part of an elite side and you can have a great career. And I mean, I, that that's maybe a bit harsh on McAllister. It makes it sound like I just think he doesn't. He's just like a body. <laughs> But everything that he's asked to do, he does to a good standard. Yeah. Like, for a team which, like, honestly should not be in this title race. No. And has a really good chance of winning the league. And for a really yeah. good fee. There's yeah, like, yeah, fee great fee. Th really solid. Or something, I think yeah. it, might rise, it might rise in the 50 or so odd. But, and do you think this is another one where, amazing, if they win the Premier League signing the season? Or do we just put them in signing the season? We put, the only one there right now is Declan Rice. He's, he's, the only de one. he's definitely amazing. If, yeah, if they win the league, yeah, he's got to be considered. Yeah, I think so as well. I, I completely agree. But even now, people talk. I, I feel people talk more about Zaboslai than him. That's mental. I think Which that people will be silly. more annoyed so. about us not putting Zaboslai in amazing. Well, yeah. you guys are cl not clueless. Let's, let's <laughs> not, I haven't actually done that yet. That's yeah, like yeah. my I'm theory. I'm not going to insult like. you. Sorry. Um, okay, Craven Birch. Not played enough. 
Like he's under a thousand minutes. A guy who again struggles to get into that Liverpool midfield. Like there is a little bit eventually. When do we go? Like okay, Graham Birch. Like when are you gonna start playing again? Then like I'm, okay, you yeah. were good at Ajax. Um, you went to yeah. Bayern Munich. Didn't work. Now moved to Liverpool. You're still not there. At what what moment do we go? Well, th what this is on you now. This isn't about okay, you're not getting the chances. You're not performing enough. I'm at it. that point now. You're already there. Yeah, I think. When I'm watching Liverpool and he's on the pitch, I just think he's a level below everyone else. Yeah. I don't think he's... I, don't, I think it's sort of a similar to like Cody Gappo. When yeah, he's on the pitch, yeah, yeah. There are, he is that sort of level below everyone else. Yeah. And and Cody's definitely poor this year, Jesus. Yeah. He's been really bad. And I think it's fair. a shame because obviously, you know, there is such a talented individual there. But like a lot of players, sometimes it just doesn't work out at the highest level. So should we put him into awful? I've got him in awful. Awful. But who knows? Like, this is a guy who could... It, no, exactly. Next year, he could become like a world yeah. beater, and it wouldn't surprise me. And he's no. one of those difficult kind of players where you're like, his numbers in the Netherlands, you were like, this should be a 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah but yeah. you're not. No. Please. And you don't do enough defensively to be an 8. So mm. you have to work out what you are going to be so that a manager can use you because you're not so good that you're like Trent Alexander Arnold. Yeah. Where someone's like, I actually don't care. We're going to work out. We're going to completely unbalance our team because if we get the best out of this guy, Ooh. it'll make us elite. Like, yeah. Kravenberg is just like, he's he's like a guy. He's, he's a, a guy. He's a man that you know. He's an awful guy right now in terms of our <laughs> he's an ranking. He's awful guy. <laughs> not not personality-wise. <laughs> uh, quickly, Endo. Again, just another player with just over a thousand minutes. But for a guy who essentially, not many people last year would have said Endo would be playing for Liverpool's no. midfield and helping him in the title race uh, and doing very, very well. But he's got to probably go into the amazing category, right? Yeah. That's pretty strong. You don't think he's been? I think, I think he's, he's, I think he's, he's been, been good. Who, no, no, I agree. I, I, he's he's, he's really, at worst, really he's been fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing is pretty. I just think with someone who, I guess, again, yeah, if they win the league, yeah, fair they, enough, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, like they were after, they were going to spend 150 million pounds on Caicedo. They were going to then spend six, 70 million on uh, Romeo Lavia. Yeah. And then they went and got this guy who no one had really heard of and thought, well, that's. That's awful. They've been done by Chelsea and ends up. They've and he been pretty and he cost good. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. He's he been good. Nothing literally. as well. Literally. Um, okay. Wolves. Only one player we can talk about slightly. Bellegarde, again, in and out of the squad, had really bright moments. Um, he does look. He's, some, he's so much fun to watch. I, really I will like say. Him. And like, can play anywhere. Yeah. Centre midfield, left wing, striker, DM, cam. Um, the guy can go literally anywhere. But he's not 19. No, he's slightly older. Like you he's think he is, older. but he's. I think he's twenty-five. Yeah, he's maybe he's, twenty, maybe twenty-four. But like you're kind of like, uh, okay, like I can see if you're going to come into. There are certain games where he's like, okay, I'm not starting you in this. Yeah, game. yeah. If you come into the league at that age, though, you do kind of want them to be like Mitoma, where you're just like, this guy is unbelievable, yeah. and he he's shown flashes of it. So if he's a starter next season, great. Yeah, I will put him in. Fine. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Sure. Uh, Fulham, Alex Wobey, five goals. What, what a guy. Yeah, brilliant. Most Love goals him. in his career. Love him. In the Premier League. Yeah, the best. No, I think Crazy. everyone loves Alex Wobey. Um, but fine. Like I've put him in amazing. You've been amazing? I think, yeah. he's, I think he's been brilliant. He's, now we're talking. He's so, You've I've, always loved Alex Wobey. Everyone loves Alex Wobey. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. intelligent, quality player. He's I brilliant. would rather put Calvin Bassey in amazing over Wobey. If I've, Everton had him instead of Harrison, I do think they would be better off. Oh, we'd be, no, we'd be <laughs> four or five places. Above. Hon honestly, the, we did need to sell him because he was contract running out and it was January and we got 26 million for him. Yeah, you got good really, money. So that's really good. Good money. good money, yeah. But he's so... I love him. I think he's brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, he's brilliant. All right, boys, you guys can put him in amazing. I would have put Calvin Bass in amazing. This is the guy at the start of the season. Everyone was like, he is shocking. He was awful. <laughs> and obviously, he had <laughs> he was a really poor time awful awful previously as well. Uh, but the last like four months have been really, really solid. Like, made him, like, yeah. uh, Fulham look worse without him yeah, in the back line yeah. now. Um, and, like, put Tim, put Tim Ream without a job at the moment, <laughs> uh, which you never thought you'd say of Fulham. Um, and so yeah, I'm I'm keen to I'm keen to fight the fight here for Bassi and put him in amazing. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I think all right. He's in five for me, but the the the, the improvement from last year yeah. is mad. Yeah. Um, and then Raúl Jiménez, Mitrovic left. Raúl Jiménez came in five goals uh, for Jiménez. Um, I think he's lost a bit of athleticism, but he is going to always score the odd goal. Yeah. yeah so he's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. And he, obviously they've got um, Moon, uh, Muniz. Muniz, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he's looked like a lot of a, fun, a bit of a fun yeah, player as well. Yeah, so right, yeah. Be interesting to see how things work out there. Man City then. Jeremy Doku, Patrick Van Straten. Where's he going? 
Um, he's fine. Yeah, he's been fine. I do think in the long run he'll be an excellent signing. Yeah. for them. At the moment, he's he just doesn't play Man City football yet. No, and nor should he be expected to. Like he was a bit of a soloist at Ren, and he's an amazing passer. He's got incredible athletic abilities. He's great one on one. He's got everything that you would want as a player to add to that Man City squad, but what he doesn't have at the moment is just an understanding of like what he should be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are so many times where you see him on the edge of the box and he's got the half yard that it requires to put it across. And Pep is all about that sort of efficiency in those moments. And Doku will check back, kind of try and cut inside, beat the man again. You know, it just feels like, despite him being kind of one of the faster guys in the team, it feels often like their football slows down when he's on the ball. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I love the guy fine this season i'm quite concerned that he might be really good for them in the long term <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see what happens i'm happy with fine uh Gavardio alfie most expensive center back in the world mm -hmm. i again i in my overrated squad put him in at left back really um not that i think he he's been bad this year just he's not like been incredible um, no. and it's tough to get into that man city back line as, as yeah. a center back isn't it with yeah the, i think stones. similar to doku we say this all the time it takes a it takes a season to get yeah. used to Pep's, Pep's game, but I think you pay the money for a reason. He has all of the fundamentals to be. If you're building the center R in a back three, <laughs> you can play left center back. It's him. He's a great carrier, good duel winner, good passer as well. And yeah. I think mm. what you could see, which we haven't loads, but we have seen the odd moment, is when he will be sort of that whip holder on the left hand side and plays that more offensive role, and he's actually really good. And you wouldn't looking at him, you'd think it looks it might be a bit Mobile, awkward. Yeah. But he he looks really good there. And I think if we want if Pep still refuses to play Foden in those central areas and they don't go out and sign a left back, we could have Foden on the left coming in with Radiolo overlapping. And I think that would work. I think that's quite a nice idea. Well, there you go, Pep. You've heard it here. There's there's the tactics for you. Um we'll move on to Kovacic. Now, if we're going to put... Sorry, where do we want to put Gavardi? I'd put Gavardi on amazing. Amazing. Where would you put him, Pat? I'd probably go fine. I'm more on the On this season, I'd go fine. But as a sign as on a the signing. whole, okay. I think he will kick on. Okay. Uh, Kovacic then. If we're putting them as fine, do we have to put Kovacic as awful? I've got him as amazing. You put Kovacic as amazing? I really like Kovacic. I, just I don't think, think... I love him, but I don't think he's I don't think he's I think when you see... Uh, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> convince me. Like, Let me try I'm and say I'm not being convinced. Um, when he plays next to Rodri, I think City look the most comfortable and secure. I think he is he allows Rodri to sit and be a six. And I don't think you get that option with Stones going in there, Bernardo Silva in there. Mateus Nunes is, an, is another player that just similar to Doku Guardiola. It might yeah. take him a bit. And I think Pep Guardiola has always said about how he loves carriers of the ball. He thinks they're elite, they're a game changer, they're sort of a cheat code. Kovacic's carrying yeah, ability and dribbling yeah, ability is thing. unbelievable. Mm. And I think he has just, in Pep Guardiola's mind, I think his strongest 11, I think Kovacic is in the next couple, in a big game. I just feel like when I, mm. if, if Man City Very win true. the league, to me, it's not because of Kovacic. No, but it's what he allows other players to do, I think. Oh, I don't know, man. Like, I, I feel like I've seen. I, just, I feel like I've seen a better coach at Chelsea than I have at Man City. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, no, I'd agree. Because I think we all love the player. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but when they signed him, I thought this is an amazing yes. signing. Like this is exactly yeah. like okay, he doesn't have like the goal getting ability of Gundogan, but he certainly has the ability to drive the team through those tight spaces. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think. I wonder if if Pep thought that he was going to be able to give Rodri the odd rest with Kovacic. Which Maybe. certainly he has not been able to no. do. And I agree, like, in a big game, like, Kovacic and Rodri is, like, a very stable base. But at mm -hmm. the same time, like, in a big game, like, yeah, add one midfielder to your one-man midfield. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and you've got a two-man midfielder <laughs> yeah, like exactly. that. So, so, I don't know. Like, I I think he's, at, for me, at best, he's been fine this season. Awful is too strong. Okay. Yeah, I don't think he's been awful. But but you also sign a player at this age because they need to contribute immediately. And I don't really think he has done that to a huge degree. On the other hand, he could be instrumental in them winning. How much League, was it? Thirty million. 30. Okay. Thirty million, which is uh, today's same age for a player like Kovacic is actually really good. Well, it's the same um, as McAllister. Or... Yeah. Well, yeah, it's about the same as which McAllister. Which makes McAllister look like a good deal. I. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll put. We'll put him fine. We'll put him fine. Whereas Mateus Nunes, 
I, obviously, for the future, maybe something will happen. Yeah, it's what it is. But yeah. right now, it's find the receipt because yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Okay. Uh, Sheffield United guy, uh, will storm through. Here we go. Gustavo Hammer. Um, I like him. I think he was very good for Coventry last season. But this is also a look. We're looking at a team which are probably most likely to get relegated. Mm -hmm. They sign these players and they don't have a big budget, do they? No. He will be great for them in the championship next season yeah. if they get to the championship, of course. Um, maybe a miracle will happen. Um, but he's not really made big. Like, no, of course this, not. This can't go, he can't go above fine for me. No, I think really. he is fine. Yeah. Maybe. Or, I think fine is is okay. Cameron awful, Archer. Yeah. Fine. Good signing. I like him. I really liked him um, when he was at Norwich. But Yeah. It's, it, it, it was never going to be able to lead the line as a nine. In the no, league. not in a, yeah, not with the Sheffield United. No, so I think can't create chance. it's probably an awful sign. It's probably awful, but I think it's a good signing. Yeah, like for the championship next season, these are really good signings that help build, yeah. uh, that will have a real 100%. big impact. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I think, yeah, I'm happy with them. Fine, fine or fine, awful is, is absolutely fine. Let's get to Spurs then. James Madison, four goals, seven assists so far this year. Has been injured for part of the year as well. Um, I think you saw a, a slight drop off the Spurs when he was injured. Definitely, yeah. Saw a slight drop off for a few play of these players when they were injured. James Madison, he, he is amazing. Like, yeah, he, he is. is yeah. He is. He was yeah. amazing. He was amazing at Leicester. He's an amazing signing for forty million as well. Yeah. Like he was the Incredible. first. I think he was the first signing of the window really for any yeah. for, for any club in the Prem, uh, give or take maybe. Um, yeah, he is amazing. I think he's just. Someone that spurt like in losing Harry Kane, who obviously was always a massive goal threat, but also like a creative, creative yeah. uh, monster as well. They need someone like like Madison who can do obviously more creative stuff, um, but can also find the back of the net and a great set piece taker as well. Yeah. Spurs, um, amazing, I think is flat out mm -hmm. uh, to the resident goalkeeper uh, analysis uh, or pundit Alfie Vicario. What do you think? I was, when they signed him, I was slightly worried because obviously they'd gone in quite hard on David Breyer. Yes, they and did. And then yeah. Brentford had just said no, basically. And then they were a sign of, ooh, where are we going to go here? <laughs> but I think undercover Paratishi, <laughs> don't want to bait him out or anything, but <laughs> I think he's been brilliant. And I was, I hadn't, obviously I haven't watched a lot His of His first him. couple of games are like a couple of shaky moments. But he's gone on from that. And, and I think monster. when Everton played, when we beat Spurs, yeah. he was, you could really tell that he wasn't comfortable with the likes of Granthwaite, Tarkovsky, Onana, Calvert-Lewin, That like, pressure onto him, he, isn't it? We, yeah. I, think we, I think we scored twice from it. Yeah, you did. And um, he was, but that's very negative talking. He's been brilliant. Yeah. And they've almost, he has got better with that as well, obviously, because referees normally, for like last season, they were always giving that as a foul. Yeah. Whereas this year, they don't seem to be anymore. Um, I, I, one of these players at Spurs has to be a signing of the season. M Van uh, der Ven, Mickey Van der Ven is someone we can talk about as well. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's either Madders, Vicario, or Mickey Van der Ven that fit that mould. I Mickey. would have Madison in there without his injury. Yes. Yeah, but that's the thing with Madison. You never get yeah. him without his injury. Yeah. Like, I agree, because who knows where they'd be. But I, I think I'd go Van der Ven of, yeah. of those guys. Because he was, he's very young. They did pay a lot of money for him. They paid more money for him than, yeah. you know, 16? Arsenal did for Gabriel or Saliba. 16, yeah, yeah, something like that. A lot of money, yeah. I thought, it was, I thought it was 40. So that, that so actually even, that can be even not be further 60. if it is more. But like, he's been as good as you could possibly have wanted him to be. Like, amazing recovery speed. Looks completely assured in that back line. It is a back line that's incredibly defensively aggressive. Yeah. Like Doggy um, and Romero and even Porro this season, I, all of them are, are like four tackles and interceptions a game. Yeah. For Romero, that's like for Romero's in the top 5% of centre backs for like defensive actions. Um, Udogi's in the top 10%. Like these guys are are all jumping into tackles. And Fantafen is the one guy who doesn't do that. Um, and is required to basically sprint back, mop up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. he does it, and he never really looks hurried. Um, I just think he looks absolutely fantastic. Um, you've, I, even though the defense clearly as well, they're a team that sell out in defense to to get more in attack. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think we probably need to touch on that when we talk about Brendan Johnson. Like they're a team who basically everybody eats in attack except for Kulusevski. Um <laughs> but. 
that means that the defenders have so much to do and found the fan just like steps up every single time and it's i don't know it's just nice to have a dutch player playing well given the other guys we've talked about <laughs> um have been absolutely dreadful so yeah i think that he'd be my candidate here as well just because i think madison it's taylor's oldest time yeah like, he's yeah. amazing he's then wrong. he's injured then he's, he's amazing wrong. then he's injured yeah, yeah. i'm happy with that mad is amazing vicari amazing and i'm i'm happy to have van der ben as one of the contenders for signing of the season would you count Adoju? they tend i get well i mean it's his first year playing for spurs isn't it because i would did you count Adoju? we can talk about Adoju. why not would you uh, have Adoju over van der ven for signing the season i'm just thinking about it now i did have an amazing but he has been brilliant oh, was he joined was it january he joined and then they sent him back on loan. yeah he went back on over six yeah. months is has there been a better left back this season in the league no Adoji's too, yeah. Adoji's so I one. think he'd be signing the season. Signing the season. I think he's in the 90th percentile. He's above the 90th percentile for pass completion, progressive carries, interceptions. He's a very good progressive passer. Yeah. yeah he's he's really so he's, he's got everything. And he's I think like, he's really young. I think he's brilliant. No, you're right, mate. He is he is really good. If we're counting him, I think yeah. I'd happily also consider that as yeah. well. Um, let us know in the comments below if you should we should be counting him. And let's touch upon a couple of the other signings. Uh, one being alone as well. Timo Werner, two Premier League goals, two assists. Um, there's an option to buy up for 30 million, maybe a little bit less than Not that. Not bad. Um, yeah. I think it's really good. I think it's like I think he's been fine. Like yeah, been been a really solid loan move for him. Um, and yeah, not he was barely playing at RB Leipzig, so he's managed to get something there. Uh, Dragerson, he's only again not played enough. It's fine, and one game did play. It's like a warm body. They lost three. Yeah, and they did. They did just need centre back cover. Yeah, but we won't touch on him. Brennan Johnson is our last one then for Spurs. Pat, you mentioned him then previously yeah. about the because Spurs being more attacking due to the defence. Fifteen hundred minutes, four goals, six assists, only fifteen starts. Um, only twenty-two years old as well. Mm. Not necessarily a youngster, but not too bad because sometimes I look at Johnson, I think, and if you look at him statistically, oh. there's not much jumping out there. Like His a, FB ref is yeah, not it's a lot of red, good. a lot of red. But he's good. I think he's kind of surprised me this year for Spurs. Like he's he's been better than I expected him to. I intensely dislike the signing. Like, did, yeah, they spent did. a lot of money it, for it, the guy who has a, a yeah, horrible massive. profile. And I think as well, you know, the question with Johnson was, is this guy going to end up being like a difference-making attacker for us? Because that's what they needed to be in the market yeah. for. Kane had just gone. Son is going. Like, it's happening in the next couple of years, one way or another. Like, whether to injury or whatever. Like, he's 32 at the yeah. end of the season. Um, you need difference-making attackers, not just guys who are like okay and i think that if they'd like kept their powder dry added some money the following summer they could have maybe got somebody at a much higher level yeah that said his performance has been faultless like i mean 10 goal involvements in 15 starts is sure. fantastic for a 22 year old with uh no discernible abilities um i again it, to me it feels a little bit like i i, I look at i look at angebor and it feels a little bit like um when nagelsman was at hoffenheim and you were just like, oh wow, like look at look at look at all these terrible players yeah. who are getting like 15 <laughs> goals in the in the league. The only one of them who was actually good was Kramaric. Um he just did it time and time again. He had a way to like juice the numbers of mm -hmm. the guys playing up front for him. And um, I think that's happening to Johnson to some degree because he's getting sub minutes too. Yeah, he is, he yeah. is, he is. You know, you saw it even with Solomon in legs. his limited moments. Like yeah. Solomon was doing was doing really well, and I was like, Solomon isn't this good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think Brennan Johnson, based on these numbers, has been amazing. I I'm gonna hold off though overall no, that's because fair I just don't think he's as good as he looks at the moment. Yeah, but he's 22, I mean. and I could just be wrong, and he could just step up and be great. No, I think that's fair enough. That's really good. Yeah, Spurs. Had a very, very good window. Now we look back on it, don't we? Um, Luton then. Two more left. Luton, Newcastle. Luton, Tahith Chong. Good. For the money we paid and like for the budgets that Luton are, are doing. Yeah. I think it's been really good this year. Yeah. Like, it's I been think a... If you take all the kind of, if you make it relative, I think it's been an amazing sign. How many minutes has he played? Uh, a lot. Over a thousand. Okay. Over a thousand. Over a thousand five hundred, I think. Um, he's cut, he wasn't starting at the beginning. Now he's starting week in, mm -hmm. week out. I think he's been really good. But the one we need to talk about and possibly signing touching of the upon signing of the he season. He is the signing of the season. Ross Barkley. 100%. Sir Ross Barkley. Um, really? He has been ridiculous. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, is he... Oh, is he better than Luton? 
Yeah. Like, should he be playing for a mid-table side, do you think? Then, Is he outperforming all the other people in the yeah, squad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, so, yeah, quite yeah, easily. I think, I think... What, what do you think is his limit then? Like, where do you think... Because is he a Champions League player? What? No. No, no it's just a question. It's no, just a question. No, no. It's a well, it, then? I did th well, it depends what role you want. Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay. <laughs> is he then a... Look, would he perform... place player? Would I rather have him over Casemiro at United? Yes. Ooh. But... That's because they do different things yeah, and yeah, it depends yeah, yeah, what yeah, role sure, you sure, want. Sure. Yeah, very so, exactly. Amrabat, you know, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, but just, for Luton and making it relative to Luton, he probably is one of the signing seasons. Like he's 100%. been, they might stay so up, yeah, which, which is amazing. Is Imagine incredible. If they stay up, it'll be bananas. <laughs> and, so good. I'd also think credit to Rob Edwards because that takes a lot of, yeah, to get him in. Yeah, and, and it was go, actually a six-month deal, wasn't it? Same with Andros Townsend. Or was it just Andros that was the I think it was just Andros Townsend. Because okay. he was at France, he went to France, yeah. didn't really get many minutes, no. wasn't great. And then to say, come and be our... Lynchpin. Yeah, come be <laughs> our deep line playmaker and actually for it to work out. And they've had shouts getting in the England team. Like, and, and probably I'm not a fair enough shouts yeah, not, as well. Fair it, enough shouts. Maybe not quite there, but I'm not against it. Pat, are you happy with us putting him in contender for signing the season? Yeah, if they stay up, it will be one of the craziest stories yeah. of the last few years in the Premier League. And he has been the key guy in, in making that happen. Like, I, I can't actually wrap my head around the possibility that Luton might stay up. Yeah, it's definitely. And, and also, just when you watch him, you're like, oh, this is Ross Bar what Ross Barkley always had um, being used in the service of winning football matches. Yeah. Whereas you used to watch Ross Barkley and you're like, that was fun to watch. Uh, it'd be good if it did anything. For his side. <laughs> and now it feels like it is actually making it like at 29, yeah. he's kind of like realized how he can win games. <laughs> So it, it's great, man. And he is impossible Sorry. to press off the ball. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. he's crazy good. Uh, okay, then. Well, our final one, Newcastle. And we'll rattle through. Um, Tanali, find the receipt, I guess. If they can get back that money, they can. Uh, calamity, I mean, calamity, we'll be interested what happens next year for him. But um, He'll be fine next season. Yeah, fine. yeah. Really just judge him next year, can't we? Uh, Harvey Barnes had slight injuries. Fine, I think. Yeah. Been out thirty million was it? Paid I think for he's him? yeah. I think he's unfortunate, obviously, because of the injuries and how good Anthony Gordon's been. Yes, yes. Um, and then Livermento, we've got to talk about him coming from Chelsea. Uh, well, Southampton technically, not normal at Chelsea, but Chelsea got a decent amount of money for it. Um, he there at moments has been spoken about for a little while now as will he displace Dan Burn at left back? He didn't really. No. It made me mind more. I think, that, I think that's more. That's really good. Did he? Will he just burn Kieran Trippier at right back? No, Trippier has been. Those are really two decent well. players, though. But like at some point, he doesn't need to. Yeah, start but playing, Trippier, right? yeah, but Trippier and all of Newcastle's play goes through Bruno and Trippier. Yeah, like that—that's how that works. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think Dan Burn. People thought, oh, will he displace Dan Burn because people didn't think Dan Burn was very good, and he, he is. He's, he's very good at what he's, he's really good. At. good. So, yeah. so like it's very hard to displace the guys in the team. Who are good. Whereas I think there were points this season where Barnes could feasibly have grabbed hold of a place in the Newcastle side. Okay. And didn't. Okay. And also his fee was far too much. Yeah. Whereas Livermento, I think Livermento is 21. Yeah, he's still at the top. I mean, his, that said, I don't think he's been good, really, at all. Like, defensively, like, his challenge success is really, really bad. Like, he's obviously he's never been doing a, much He's never the... been a defensive player, though, has he? No. Well, yeah, but he's not doing much of the back. other stuff as well. Yeah, that yeah. is true. And, I mean, it's hard to know because, like, Arsene Wenger used to talk about preferential vision, right? Where he was like, I played Pires on one side because when I played him on that side, he could see the whole, whole field. If I played him on the other side, he just saw the touchline. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And that might be true for Livermento as well. Yeah. But pretty much every, every statistical category, he's been, like, poor this season. Yeah. And, and I've always, just on the eye test, felt like you can get at them down that side where he's playing out of position as a 21-year-old, admittedly. Yeah. So it feels harsh to say he's been awful, but Newcastle's defence has been atrocious uh -huh. for the last few months. Atrocious. And I do think he has been a significant part of that. Okay. Okay. But one uh, for uh, the future, you'd end up being like... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's, he's, really, he's a good. great talent. Um, Lewis Hall hasn't played he no. will become a permanent transfer i think according to eddie howe he's, Again, he's still so played, young hasn't played enough, he's so it. young but i think a lot of newcastle fans have been slightly disappointed with him i think with how things have worked like last year there were moments he played i think it's man city like twice and had really like solid yeah. games at left back um but it just doesn't seem to be quite working out at newcastle just yet but who knows super young we'll see what happens with him in the future 
Um, I think that is everyone, lads. No, I think we skipped Burnley. We did skip Burnley. I saw it at we the time. Did skip I saw you go past Burnley. You and were I was right. Like, did you just not want to come? You were right. No, sorry, sorry, Burnley fans. We are. You were right. I did skip Burnley. I saw Man City and jumped ahead. Um, okay, let's do Burnley really quickly then. Um, Sander Burge joined from Sheffield United rivals to Burnley. That's how I would describe him. <laughs> no, it's weird. I, uh, when it happened, really I was really was surprised. Really why did, I didn't understand why Sheffield United would do that. But I think they needed the money. I think a lot of it comes... And I think also the big thing, he wasn't going to sign a new contract. Okay. Um, and that makes more sense. That, that was the final time they could get good money for him. Um, yes. But he's been... I, I generally... Don't, I don't even think he's been fine. But no. They signed... like Again, Burnley signed a lot of players in the summer. We won't go through every single one. But they signed a lot of players. Um, Sander Burge was one of the kind of standout players. Definitely high expectations. Would, yeah, yes. high expectations. Yeah, definitely. And hasasn't reached well, that know, at he all. Hasn't. hasn't reached that at all. And I think he probably does have to fit in the, the awful category. Mm -hmm. um, James Trafford then. Back to you, Alf, being the goalkeeper. Um, mm. What do we think? Because we've mentioned him a few times on this show, me and Pat. Um, what do you think of James Trafford? As a, sign, as a player this season, I think he's just been fine. Mm-hmm. I think he's very young and there's obviously mm. talent there, but he does lack a bit of... On the ball, obviously, he's being asked to do different things. I think he is he struggled a little bit, but I wouldn't say he's been awful at all. Yeah, yeah. I think he's he's gone through a bit of a rough patch sort of the last... Do you think it's just like he needs his experience to grow? Possibly. 100%. And I think that's always very hard to go keep Yeah. And like, the thing is, I think... People before have mentioned about, like, especially the set piece stuff has been a bit of the issue. Yes, he has. Or the talking yeah. point. But, like, this is a guy who was playing in goal for, uh, for Bolton week in, week out as well in the lower leagues. Like, he 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 has been dealing with this kind of thing before. Um, I guess just in the Premier League, it's it's another level. Yeah. Uh, any any added thoughts, Pat? And where yeah, do you where do you rank him? You're coming up against teams in the Premier League that have, like, dedicated set piece set coaches. Piece, yeah. um, and also in a season where... As we were saying before, like the rules around what you can do to a keeper have been liberalized. Yeah. Like informally, yeah, true, informally yeah. liberalized, <laughs> yeah. but like you can just do stuff now that, which I like because yeah, I hate yeah. just keepers no, falling no, over and kind of corner just, yeah. you know, turns Completely into a free agree. thing. But, um, but I think that's a rough environment and my expectations are quite low for most of the guys coming into Burnley because most of them are kids um, playing in the Prem for the first time. Mm, yeah. Like that's why harsher on Berger, like softer on Trafford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. So, so yeah, fine. Uh, final one from Burnley then, Aaron Ramsey. Um, there's a few of these Burnley players where you just think like, oh, I guess it's, it's just, fine. Yeah, it's, fine. it's, like, just... it's just not worked out really, has it? And there's yeah. that part of that on the manager, part of that on the signings. Burnley spent a lot of money. They did spend you had a judge to, uh, And they spent a lot of money to try and stay in the Premier League. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. And if you're one of these signings, um, where a lot of it is, is expected of you, I think, yeah, you probably do fall slightly into that awful category. But not to say that he's not going to have a good future because he's very no, young. So we'll see what happens there. But there we have it. All 20 Premier League teams done. Let us know if you managed to watch the whole video down in the comments below. Uh, Alfie, where can the guys at home find your stuff? Um, on Twitter at AlfieBigs03. Lovely. Lovely. Make sure you check it out. We will hopefully have Alfie on as well in the future. Thanks so much for coming yeah, down. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Van Straten, if they want to hear more about your voice. About more about your voice? More, more of about your voice. my voice. Where can they go? Uh, I have a podcast with Pete Dorman, uh, Unseen Incidents. You can find us at patreon.com slash patrickvs. Uh, you can find us on your favorite podcast app. Just search Unseen Incidents. Uh, yeah, subscribe, support. Um, keep my baby in nappies. <laughs> there will also be a link in the description as well. And one final thing. I'm running the London Marathon. I'm doing it in three weeks. If you would like to donate to me, please do that as well. That'll be in the description as well. Um, I've got a 32k I've got to run on Thursday, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, that'll be three and a half hours of my life. I won't get back. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video, get in the comments below. Let us know who you think the signing of the season has been and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you later. Bye.